Hey guys, so about three weeks of playing this game literally 24-7 and learning from the best players in Dark Star Imperium, it's safe to say that I forgot the main tricks when it comes to mining and related activities. I'd like to share with you 37 tips for improving your mining game, becoming a mining machine. We'll start with the settings you should change, a general overview of mining locations, what talents you're supposed to get, and then the actual mining techniques. If you follow these tips, not only will you make mining more fun and streamlined, but you can also make a fortune out of it. This guide is meant for both beginners and more advanced players. So let's dive right in. Let's start with the most basic settings that you need to change to speed up your mining process and make it easier overall. The first tip is auto digging. You do this by clicking the middle mouse button and it's going to dig as long as you're in range. You should always, always, always use this when you're digging. And the second tip is how to set up auto run digging. Now you can use your auto run hotkey for automatic horizontal digging. And all you have to do is change it to a little bit of a more accessible key. So you open up uh, settings controls and then auto sprint and set it to this is mouse four for me, but you can set it to anything you like. If it's on the mouse, I don't even have to use the keyboard to mine. So that is the reason why using mouse four. Right, how does that look in practice? So you click mouse four, and then you click middle click, and boom, a horizontal shaft. And you can do that for hours if you want to. You can, why I say horizontal is because it doesn't work up and down. Actually up and down, all you have to do is point downwards and release. No need to auto move at all. The next setting they really have to change is the field of view. This is really important, not just for mining, but for anything you're doing in this game. So you go into settings, general and field of view. I think 91 is the default. You should put it all the way to 120 or 121, whatever the max is. You see what the difference is, how much more zoomed out you are, how much easier it is to see what you're doing. This is a lot more natural because the default one is too zoomed in, in my opinion. Let's go to the next topic. There is where to mine. If you look at the map of the solar system, you'll notice this little safe zone here. The three planets are in the safe zone. So that means that you cannot get killed no matter where you are within the safe zone. If you're on the planet, if you're in, in between two planets, if you're on the moon, you're safe. Every single ore in the game can be found on these three planets and their moons. That doesn't mean that the other planets are not important. They are because it's much easier. There's less competition, but they're very dangerous because you can get killed in space around the planet. You can see which ore is available on each planet. And if you go over all of them, you'll notice that every single ore is here. Every planet in the game has all four tier one ores. So there's really no reason to go off planet to mine tier ones. You should stick to the planet you're on. Moons also have deposits, but the problem is they're much more scarce on moons. So I would not recommend mining on moons, except you have territory scanners. We'll talk about them a little bit later. Let's talk about where you can find tier one on every planet. So every planet is different. Let's say on Alioth, the tier one ores are quite shallow. You don't have this info here, but there are certain sites that uh, display approximate uh, working depth for every ore. Alioth is a little bit more shallow. Mattis has a tier ones up to one kilometer down. Mattis is probably the best place to farm tier one. But then again, on Mattis, tier two is by far the deepest. It, it goes down to about 1500 meters, which is a big pain. While on Alioth, you can get it from 200 meters downward. Talk about Mattis. Mattis has gravity of 0.36 G. That means you're floating around a lot more. You can jump higher. In general, mining is much easier in low G planets because you can also put more load on your ships. For example, my ship has two medium containers and on Mattis, I can fill them up to 500 tons considering it only has one large engine and some mediums. That's insane. On Alioth, you wouldn't be able to pull anything like that. You can also climb out of vertical holes on Mattis. All you have to do is hold space and up and just go a little bit left and right. Let's talk about tip number nine, that is digging and mining talents. So if you open up your talents with F2 and then go into mining and inventory and then terraformer, you should 
definitely take operations range, few levels, dig tool optimization. This is one of the most important ones because this directly impacts how fast you're mining per minute, let's say. Terraforming operations affects your dig tool. Next, under miner, you should take a little bit more range. Detector upgrades. We're gonna talk about the detector later, but this is pretty huge for the detector. So definitely take that. Mining optimizations, another one that is very similar to the dig tool optimization. Advanced mining and scanner upgrades. Now the next part would be dredger. But in order to reach this, you need advanced mining at level five. And let me tell you something, that's a bit hard to reach. That's 1,500,000. I think it's about 10 days if you queue it up. But if you get to Dredger, you're gonna be the best miner on the planet. Another critical talent for mining is primary container augmentation, which increases the range of your link container. The primary container range is basically your link container. So if you leave your ship on the surface and you go deep down, you're still going to be linked to your ship. Under stock control, you can also find another talent that is basically doing the same thing, and that is primary container advanced augmentation. This way you can get more than two kilometers range on your link container, which makes you able to farm even tier fives deep underground. Let's take a look at the tools that you're using in this game. The harvest tool, honestly, you should just unbind and put something else. I've put the repair tool. It's useless. You shouldn't be harvesting. That is literally the last resort. If we look at the scanner tool, we have this graph. And currently on the surface, it has four different lines for the four tier ones. Uh, if you want to remove a certain tier one or if you want to add something else, all you have to do is click tab and then left click on the scanner. And here you can pick and choose what you want to keep. So let's say I'm looking for quartz and quartz only. I'm going to put it like this, then run around and voila. It's much easier to read like this. Not only that, but bauxite and coal for some reason have the same color. Keep in mind that you're going to have to reset this every time you log back in because it resets itself when you log out. With your scanner tool, you can only scan every few seconds. You can do it manually or by crossing a certain distance. But there's a little trick that you can do to make it spam the scans. All you have to do is swap between another tool and the scanner tool. I do it by clicking two and three. Two, three, two, three. You can always trigger a scanway manually by holding Alt and then left clicking. Directional scanner can sometimes be tricky because you can only detect ores up to 35 meters away. That's why you want those talents. Make sure you're always about 30 meters away when you're trying to use this tool because more than that kind of kills the purpose of that tool. The detector tool has a slight delay. So when you're using it, move your mouse very slowly. Use headphones and raise the volume when using it because the volume has less delay than the visual. Later on, you can upgrade the response time with proper talents as well. You can also dig with the flatten tool. It's very useful for creating horizontal shafts. You do have to level up in the talents a little bit to uh, make it more efficient. All right, so let's go over the basic mining procedure. You should always focus on one ore at the time. If you have multiple ores displayed, you should try to pick out one and try to get close to it. In your first few weeks of gameplay, only mine tier one. There's no need for you to mine tier two, focus on tier one. That's what's gonna build your industry. That's gonna build your first few ships. You don't need anything else. You can even make some money off of mining tier one, and then you can buy some higher level stuff from the market. That is the most efficient way to play the early game. Quartz does not play a big role in industry. So treat it as a 0.5 tier ore in the first week or two, or you can just sell a portion of it on the market for some extra money. Let's talk a little bit about the perfect gradient. So how to know when you're going straight towards the deposit. Let's say you're fast moving with the scanner tool equipped on the surface and you're getting closer to the deposit. If you manage to close about 40 to 50 meters between your last two auto scans, you're literally pointing at the deposit. And why is that? Well, it's the maximum distance that you can close between two auto scans. Here's a really nice technique that I use when I'm mining in order to keep myself organized and know where to go next. I call it the six directions technique. You should only ever move in six directions, 
north, south, east, west, and up and down. This way you can orientate yourself properly, and keep things in order. You should only break this rule after you found a deposit with your detector tool. Only then you can go straight towards the ore no matter where it is. Always start your mining procedure from the surface because that way you can eliminate one of the directions. You don't have to go up. That makes things a lot easier as you can use another very nice technique that I'll go over in a bit. The mining sphere is actually a little bit bigger than the circle shows, so use that to maximize efficiency. Let's talk about force respawn, the bread and butter of mining in Dual Universe Beta. This is why you don't need a good way of getting out of your shafts. The first thing you need is a resurrection node on your ship. Once you place it down, you have to activate it. You can get this from the tutorial or you can buy it from the market later on. So let's say you're mining your kilometer down. All you have to do is make sure that your nano pack is empty. Empty as in only tools and blueprints. Then you click escape, force respawn and click yes. I still think this is sort of temporary because it doesn't seem like this was intended. But everyone's using it for mining, it's not even considered an abuse, it's just there, and that's it. We'll see how long that's gonna last. Always use the dig tool to dig, because it has a bigger sphere than the scanner tool. Always keep it set to the biggest sphere possible by using control and the scroll wheel. Not only do you get a wider tunnel, but you also dig faster. Once you find your deposit, you should always try to find its top first, so later on, once you're on the top, you can clear the sides much more easily and you don't have to climb up constantly, but you're falling down. Now jump mining is a technique that I use whenever I'm digging because it gives me the best feel for the ore in 3D space. You should always jump around and mine at the same time. This way you can place your sphere on the best possible spot with minimum overlaps. Be systematic, it's important to follow some algorithm of your choice, otherwise this whole process is going to take you longer. Make sure you clean up everything before you leave, or your next scans might pick up the same deposit again, or well, whatever is left of it. If your inventory and link containers are full, mark the deposit on the map. So how do you do that? It goes in three steps. Once you're on your map, you have to click this button, center on position, and then you click set as destination. Then after that, on the bottom, you have bookmark location. You can find your bookmarks on the left side of the map. If you want to share that with someone, you go through the same process, but instead of bookmark, you can click copy coordinates to clipboard, and then you can paste it in chat. Sometimes when you're mining, you might go out of range of your link container, especially if you don't have the talents, but you still want to mine something. You don't want to go up yet. So you can fill up your nano pack and then dig towards your ship until you get in range. Once you're in range again, you can transfer the stuff from your nano pack to the link container and go back, continue mining. Keep in mind, this isn't efficient, so only use it every once in a while. So you just got your new ship and you want to use it for mining. First thing you have to do is learn what your ship's max load is and test it before you fill it up full on a mining trip. For example, you can put a lot of hematite in it. The higher the gravity on the planet, the lower the max load. Hematite is very difficult to mine because compared to other tier 1 ores, it's very dense. It's over 5 kilograms per liter, while for example bauxite is only at 128. So be careful how much hematite you mine per trip. There's a little nanopack hack that you can do in order to reduce the load on your ship. You can put up to 20 tons of cargo in your personal inventory in your nano pack and it's not going to count as extra weight on your ship but if you go over 20 tons then it's all gonna count but it's something a little extra if your ship doesn't want to take off but you still want to try to keep the ore and sometimes the whole universe the servers tend to get messed up and the mining gets really slow just don't mind then do something else that isn't heavily affected by lag like building your ship or your base Territory scanners, they're miners' best friends, but they're very expensive pieces of equipment. You can mount them on your ship and scan tiles you're standing on. A scan takes 15 minutes and you cannot move the scanners while they're active. The output that you get is a scanner result, which will tell you how much ore there is in a tile. This is mostly used for tier 3 and higher mining, since tier 1 and tier 2 distributions are relatively close all across the board. Scanners are especially important for mining on moons. 
There's a little trick with territory scanners and that is you can use three scanners on one ship to scan three tiles at once. You can do that by placing your ship on the intersection of three neighboring hexes. Place each scanner just slightly into each of the three hexes. Now you can scan three at a time, which is a solid improvement. The second little trick is that you don't even have to have the scanners on your ship. You can just deploy a blueprint of an excess dynamic core with three scanners on it and just maneuver it to the designated spot. And that is it. If you have any tips or you think I missed something very important, please leave them in the comments below. You can also join us in Darkstar Imperium on Mattis. There's a link to applying the card above and in the description. If you join us, we can pick you up on Alioth or Sanctuary, bring it to Mattis, give you a mining ship, and then you can work your way up. We're mostly PvP Corp and one of the biggest alliances in the game, but we focus on all aspects of this game. Stay tuned for more tutorials. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna like these two as well. Come catch us live on Twitch, links in the description below, as well as the hectic schedule. I'll see you in the next one.